is R.S. McCain from the other McCain blog. And he has uh, a few things to say about um, internet censorship as somebody who's been censored himself on Twitter uh, and more recently on the blog Medium. And why don't you just tell us a little bit about it? Uh, we were just inside a platform, uh, a, a panel discussion on um, uh, bias in uh, tech, uh, especially in, in companies like Google, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, these media tech giants uh, have begun deplatforming conservatives so that uh, conservative dissent is being silenced every day. Uh, uh, YouTube accounts are being demonetized. Uh, people are being denied uh, Google AdSense revenue uh, in many different ways. The left is now using uh, its power within uh, social media companies uh, to deprive uh, conservatives of uh, you know what we think of as free speech. That's true. And um, one of the points that uh, you know was made during the panel is that is that what we are seeing is that the bias uh, uh, in academia, the left-wing bias on campus that you see every day, if you read uh, 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 Campus Report uh, and other uh, sites uh, about, uh, you know, about uh, media, you know, incidents in academia, is that this left-wing mentality in academia is now being imported into allegedly for-profit capitalist companies are being taken over because they recruit from these universities. And so the students bring the biases that they've been indoctrinated with at their universities. They bring these biases with them into the company. And this is uh, how you end up with uh, James Lamore being fired at Google, uh, uh, sites being shadow banned on Twitter, uh, my own account, R.S. McCain, being uh, banned from from Twitter, uh, people's Facebook, uh, you know, uh, losing the opportunity to promote their content on Facebook. It's mm -hmm. happening every day. And, and people, like they said in the panel, people need to wake up. Yeah, it's getting worse every day. Um, the indoctrination is starting even earlier now, like high school age kids, and, you know. And what can you do about it? I mean, what do you do about... Well, the first thing you have to do as a parent, okay, and, and it, it, knowing that this is happening in the schools... Uh, because the, it's extremely powerful and overwhelming. It's, it's not just the educational system, but it's... Everything. TV, it's, it's music, it's the entertainment industry. Even the sciences, you know, science has become politicized. Right, so right. They, that's, sometimes that's all they know. And mom and dad... You know, they just need to wake up because, you know. I, I think so. I, I think one of the things that you have to do as a parent, I'm a father of six. I'm a father, of, a mother. <laughs> you're a mo you're not a, a father, mom. you're a mother. <laughs> mother of six, so I, you know, yeah, and, and, I have and some background in this too. As a parent, okay, as a parent, you have to be an active parent. If you do not take action, a uh, little tractor going past us here, adding something to the audio of the interview. Uh, but uh, if you as a parent, if you as a parent are not actively parenting, if you are not actively involved in pushing back against this kind of ideological indoctrination that's really, going on in you schools. You literally have to. Yeah, you have to push back and you have to monitor what your children are absorbing uh, just the way you would monitor their online accounts to make sure they're not chatting with someone they shouldn't be chatting with. Uh, and you have to talk to them and it, you have to explain to them. You know, I had uh, last weekend, I had like a 45 minute discussion slash argument with my 15 year old uh, daughter who asked me, you know, about my opinions, some of the uh, uh, more um, uh, controversial things that you might say. And, and, you know, and I had to explain to it is, is, is that you have to be able to ask yourself, okay, in terms of tradition, 
okay, if we're talking about religious tradition, cultural traditions, and things like that, you have to ask yourself, as G.K. Chesterton said, you know, he said, don't, or, or I'm sorry, it was C.S. Lewis said, don't remove the fence if you can't tell me why that fence is there. What do, what do our traditions mm -hmm. uh, represent? They represent the embodied experience and wisdom of generations of, of, of human achievement, the progress that brought us to where, you know, you're sitting there with more computer power in your hand, in that phone that you're recording this. You've got more computer power in that phone than was used to send the man to the moon in 1969. And how did we achieve that? What was it that allowed this kind of achievement? Well, if you're just going to say, well, these traditions, we can just uh, ignore this. And, you know, if we can just discard, uh, you know, these old time rules. If, we, if you believe that, okay, you are throwing away the map that got you where you are. And suddenly you will be steering a course with no reference points, no comma. No, uh, no compass to steer by, and you will go adrift and end up uh, shipwrecked. Yep, I agree. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Deb. <laughs>